This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Melissa Faulkner, Director of the Career Development Center at Felician College. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. Um, let's, let's talk about this. You talk to students all the time. Mm -hmm. They're leaving Felician, they're trying to go out into the workforce, and they, um, they make certain assumptions as to what is expected of them. Now, you told our producers there are three things that they need to do to get ready. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Um, have a solid resume? Yes. What are the other two things? I think that they have to be prepared with what's out there in the real world. People of their generation are not making the decisions. What does that mean? It's a more conservative world out there. The people who are making the hiring decisions are people in my generation, my parents' generation. We expect students to show up in suits. We expect to have resumes that are tailored specifically to those open positions. We expect them to have researched the field prior to interviewing. Someone says, wait a minute, hold on. I'm going for a job at an online company. I got t-shirts and jeans. What's the big deal, you say? We all wish we could work for Google. <laughs> we certainly do, but that's just not the reality. Once you have the job, it's a different story. If it's, you know, you can wear khakis every day, that's you gotta fine. Get the, you got to get the job. You have to get the job Go first. ahead. You have to. So you have to wear a suit. You have to be, pre be prepared to interview. I know that a lot of students these days struggle with the one-on-one -on -one interaction. They're too busy texting. But guess what? They have to see that you're a good fit. So what do they want to do? They want to bring you in and they want to meet with you face to face. Sometimes more than one person wants to meet with you face to face. So it's very good to practice interviewing skills as well. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. By the way, I wish we had a Chiron up, a thing at the bottom of the screen that said, Steve's voice is really screwed up because of his allergies. It's not oh. the way he normally talks. Oh. How about if you went for an interview and you have a frog voice like this? What do you do? I would make a lighthearted <laughs> joke about it. That's me, though. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you're going in for the interview. Sure. How many young people? I was telling our producers, Jackie and Jacqueline, was I not just telling you before as we were prepping for this? I said, there was someone, I'm not going to name any names, it doesn't matter. But I met someone, there are people who come in all the time looking for jobs here. And I met someone who was looking for a job. And I met her for about 30 seconds, less than that. And I knew somehow, just by the way she introduced herself, or didn't introduce herself, and no eye contact, weak handshake. Mm -hmm. And I knew that because we were a communications and broadcasting operation that she couldn't work here. Right. Am I being unfair? No, absolutely not. Because I think some people thought, why can't you give her a chance? And I thought, no, it's what we do. We meet people, we have to be out there and talk, right. uh, talk about that. Well, I think that there are three reasons for the interview. And number one is to see, can someone do the job? And usually they can, they have the skills or they're trainable. Will they do the job? But the most important part is, will they fit in? And that's why you have to sit down with them, and you have to meet with them, and you have to see what they're about. You have to dig deeper than just what's on the resume. What do you like to do for fun? How would your former supervisor describe you in three words? How would your best friend describe you? You know, if there's something on their resume like they like to skydive, well, that says a lot about their personality, mm. doesn't it? So I think you have to dig deeper and get that stuff out to see if they can really fit in with the environment of that what particular company. What about the whole challenge connected with the inability to be present because of all this? I know. Talk about it. It's a huge challenge. I think that students have to do whatever they can to brush up on interviewing skills. What, forget the last, last 20 years of being distracted? Right. Seriously. Right. You're right. Well, we have a happy medium, at least at Felician College. We have an <laughs> online system Talk called Interview Stream. What is it? It's called Interview Stream, and it has a webcam. You have a webcam built in on your laptop. And what you do is you log in and you tell this resource what type of interview you will be going for. And an actor pops up on the screen and asks you certain questions. It videotapes your answers, and then the worst part, it plays it back for you. And you have to watch yourself interview. And you're your own worst critic. We all are. Why is it good to see it? Um, well, number one, it has a counter on the bottom that says how many times you say, um, um like, uh, like, you know, whatever, <laughs> which is, it's so funny. The students love that part, but they really do improve and you could do it more than once. I can assign it to somebody. I can give them feedback, but it kind of meets them halfway in their world of technology and plus what's expected of them out there. But the reality is so interesting that you're doing that, which is really good. But in the end, it is about sitting face to face. Mm -hmm. and not with the actor on the computer, but that's better than not having 
any preparation. Um, how about the idea of rejection? Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of students that are leaving Felicia and other places are going to be rejected. They right. get discouraged. Right. How do you keep them in the right frame of mind? You just got to keep plugging along. We live in one of the most densely populated areas of the country. How many colleges are here? We're saturated. Plus, we have students who go away to college and then come back. They're all competing for the same jobs. Rejection is bound to happen. Part of the business. Yes, absolutely. What about these career fairs? <clears throat> Excuse me. Someone goes to a career fair, they go, well, this is not a job. Mm -hmm. Just going there to meet people, network, no big deal, you mm -hmm. say. I say networking is wonderful. Get as many business cards as you want. Usually when we have job fairs, every single employer there is hiring for either part-time or full-time positions. How do we know that? How do we know that? Do, we, do we really think they're looking? Yeah, I do. I really do you think do. most of them are. I do. But it's not a bad idea just to get their business cards and keep in touch with them every few months, just in case. You never know. What do you say? Hi. You met me at the Felician right. job fair, just checking in, Jim Smith, Mary Jones, whatever. Yep. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me. I'm still very interested in your, your company, whatever it might be. Just keep in touch. That's not being a pest. No. Don't do it every week. You know, do it <laughs> once every few months, and I think you'll have better How luck. How you get into this whole thing? Oh, boy. I started at Seton Hall. Actually, I have a degree in diplomacy and international relations, but I was a graduate assistant in, in the Career Center, and I fell in love with it helping students find their niche. Why do you like this? Uh, I like the success stories. I like the students who come in. They don't know what they want to major in. They certainly don't know what they want to be when they grow up. And you just kind of take them through all the steps. And then in the end, they have something. They feel good. They've accomplished something. And Felicia is very committed to helping these students. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you don't help them, I mean, even the smartest student academically, they may not have any idea what it takes out there in the marketplace. Our particular college population, there are a lot of first-generation college students. So they really don't have role models as far as this goes. How do I become a professional in life? So we really do all that we can to help them. We expose them to employers all the time. Uh, we bring them to campus. We do mock interviews. We just have people come and talk about their stories, the good, the bad, everything, so that they're exposed to it, so they get a better idea. They have real-life examples then. Three things again, a solid resume, mm -hmm. be comfortable talking about yourself, mm -hmm. and research the company before you go in for the interview. Why? Why? Because in some way, shape, or form, they're going to say, why do you want to work for us, or what do you know about <laughs> us? And if you say, I just want a job, you're not getting a call back. <laughs> I love when people, that, I always ask people, have you, what do you know about our company? Mm -hmm. What? Well, do you know what we do? Yeah, you do TV. But they didn't look at the shows. They have no idea. That's it. We're done. Right. And it's not, it's not an egocentric thing, but if you don't know who we are, what we do, I mean, it's cra where we air, right. it's a turnoff, right? Absolutely. It's Just one of checking. the biggest turnoffs. Just yeah. want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Melissa Faulkner from Felician College. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank Stay you. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. That was good. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by AmeriHealth Caritas, parent company of Perform Care, New Jersey Natural Gas, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, NJM, Choose New Jersey, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com, and by Commerce Magazine. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.